Alrighty guys, uh, it's Peggy and it's time for uh, step one of our toilet paper roll mini albums. Um, guys, as I said before, you're going to need six toilet paper rolls. So uh, let's get our toilet paper rolls and I need you to flatten these. And um, once you get those flattened, if you have a brayer, uh, which is one of these roller things, uh, go ahead and roll that really good on the edges and stuff. And uh, we want to get this just as flat as we possibly can. So uh, go ahead and get those all flattened up and stuff. If you're using a bone folder, then uh, go ahead and uh, hit your edges real good with your bone folder. If you're using, if you don't have none of the above, just get your ruler and lay down your uh, toilet paper roll and then just run it over it uh, real good until you've got it nice and flat just as flat as you can get it okay and that's what we're going to do with all of those so let's go ahead and get those just as flat as we possibly can okay and then once we have these nice and flat uh, what we're going to do is just hit the edges of these. You don't have to waste all your paint by painting the entire thing unless that's what you want to do. Uh, what I do is just get me a brush. I use the uh, El Cheapo uh, acrylic paint that you can get at Walmart there for 50 cents a bottle. I just stock up on several colors of these. And uh, what I do is just put a little bit in the lid there. And then just hit the uh, the edges, you guys, all the way around. Unless you're going to leave yours natural and raw looking. If you don't want to paint your edges, you don't have to. Uh, this is strictly if you want to do this. Um, if you're going for the old natural look, uh, just leave yours flat and smashed. And you can just wait for the next uh, tutorial. If you're going, I mean the next step. If you're going for um, like a Christmas theme or whatever, um, there's uh, you can do that way. Uh, like I've showed you there, uh, you can do the entire thing. Like I said, if you want to just paint the entire um, roll by means, go right ahead. This is your uh, book. You're just crafting along with me. Um, I've used the metallics. Uh, you guys can see that. These will be used for a Christmas album, which I'm not making today. But this is just an idea of what you guys can do with yours. You can solid paint those if you're doing a Christmas theme or a different kind of holiday theme. Or just know, uh, you know, if you want to just leave yours uh, raw, like I said, uh, you can leave those raw. If you want to... Um, stress ink your edges you can do that as well just uh you can uh get you um uh, if you don't have a uh uh distressing tool you can use uh what i do is i just use these makeup wedges you guys and just hit that and then just hit your edges real good kind of like i've done here with these we've just kind of made a frame right here you know, and if you need to come back in after it dries, it only takes a couple of minutes for all of this stuff, guys. And where the, uh, the, the rolls meet and stuff right there, if you need to go in there and hit that with a little bit of edging, you know, until you get it the way that you want it. Again, like I said, this is your book. So, you get this the way that you want it, and then, uh, we'll go on from there. And then, uh... All right, these are pretty good for me. I really like that. I think those are just fine. All righty, so mine is all done and ready. And so I'm going to go ahead and set my paint aside here. And what I'm going to do next is, is glue one of these ends together. Um, if you guys are using the Zutter Bind It All, uh, just go ahead now and stick uh, your end in that you're going to use for your binding and go ahead and nibble your ends You really don't have to glue your ends together unless that's what you prefer to do if you want it completely uh, Really really sturdy then go ahead by uh, all means and do that 
uh, use your glue guys um, I recommend a really good glue I wouldn't go with uh, something temporary definitely I wouldn't use a mamby pamby glue on this these do need a little something and a little bit of oomph you know something that's going to keep them glued shut so um, I would select a glue that's like I said got a little bit of uh, oomph to it you could use uh, E6000 if that's what you have if you have the Art Deco glue, uh, if you have Tombow, whatever you're using, I would, uh, just a little thin line, uh, you guys, just a little bit. Now, mine glues quite fast, so I'm just going to hit that for a second. But just a little bit here on this edge, uh, just a tiny dab there, you guys, right on the edge there. And then hold that shut, or if you have um, some clamps. You can go ahead and clamp these. Now, I got these online. I love these clamps. They really come in, in handy, I'll tell you. I love to keep a multitude of my clamps around. If you have the little office clamps uh, like these, you know, just go ahead and open those up and use them. Uh, you know, or just go ahead and hold these shut. You know, whatever you have, but just hit the edges of it there. Uh, just long enough for that to dry. Mine, like I said, just dries really, really fast. Then your other end that you're going to leave open, uh, of course you're going to leave open. Go back over these again and make sure, whoops, go back over these again and make sure that you've got your ends glued nice and they're the way that you want them. And then stack those all up there with your glued in. There we go. All right. Your other end, what I want you to do is go in about an inch, you guys, on the inside of your toilet paper roll. So that really finishes that out. Kind of squeezy that open there a little bit. And go down inside here with your paint, okay? About an inch is all. But that's going to give that a nice finished look for us, you know, whenever you, because this is where your big main tags are going in and out. So get your edge real good there and everything, and until uh, they look like that, about an inch on the inside of your other end there. Do that to all six of them. About an inch, like I said, just a quick, you know, nothing real thick or anything, just cover that real good. And I like doing that better with uh, the paint than I do trying to fold paper all the way to the end and all of that and trying to fold that over because it's really hard to keep it stuck down and stuff. And um, I just like the little bit of an edge with the painted um, edges on these or the distressed. You know, if you're using distress ink again, come in with your sponge there about an inch inside and uh, hit all of these with a little bit of color there on the inside. And I'm not going to bore y'all to tears while I do this, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause this. Alrighty, I'm back. All of those are painted now and we're ready for our next step. Um, guys, now is when you're going to decide basically what kind of a um, ring you're going to put on here. If you're going to put a chunk chain, um, depending upon if you're going to do just a small one off the middle here, or if you want to go up high and utilize that whole end of it right here, or if you're just going to do like um, ribbons and, and uh, fibers, I would suggest uh, in the middle here, but the choice is strictly up to you. Now you have to decide where you want your ring to attach for your binding. Me, I'm going up high right here. Um, I'm going to utilize my corner. And um, what to do, guys, if you have a punch, go ahead and punch your holes on these. Um, try to get these as, as even as possible. Where you punch your first one at, try to look and see exactly where it is now me I'm going to use one of these and then just kind of 
come in behind these like if you're using your um use your um have i used no i didn't use my two big ones i used my pages so kind of keep your pages as level as you can get those kind of use one as the uh uh, border for the next one just kind of try to get those as close to level as you can if you've got a big uh, What is it called a chopadile crocodile? Uh, boy, I bet you could do all of these at one time with that uh, But again try to get these as level as possible in here and make sure that you punch your glued end only those of you that are crafting along with me, if you're using your Zutter, again, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you have your binding already cut. The rest of us are cutting ours now. So, again, see how I've done these? And I kind of keep these even. Again, making sure I've got my glued end, not my opened end. Find your glued in again. Find it. Use one as a guide. If you're using just a regular hand punch, or if in my case you can't find it and you happen to have one of these desk punches, lay it there level by where it's going to punch at and try to get that hole lined up with the next one and get it in there as far as you put the other one. And you should be good to go with those. And then your front and back cover, same thing. You want to, um, you know, give them a little bit of room around because, again, if you can see that, my covers are a little bit bigger. You know, you try to find that on your um, toilet paper rolls at the beginning. I like to use two that's just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to push that one in there and get that corner and then use the other one. Again, the one that mates it, use this as a guide, and then get the other one in there. And then these should line up really well. Your pages just a little bit inside of your cover there. And then once you line them all up, see you've got your good front and back cover and your pages inside and everything lines up pretty good. You know, you've got your pages just a little bit off from your covers, but where everything will line up nice whenever you put your ring in there. Again, if you guys are using your Zutter, you don't have to worry about that. The only thing you have left to do is use your wires, smash those together with the machine and you're bound. The rest of us is going to grommet. Now, guys, if you don't have a punch, never fear. You can still do this. You guys, if you have an ice pick or something sharp, please be careful if you're having to waller holes in with something, okay? Please don't stab your fingers and stuff. But go ahead and do basically the same thing with your lineup and get your holes all wallered through. Where it pooches out on the back, just simply take your scissors and nip that extra piece of cardboard off right there. You guys might also want to come back in with your paintbrush again with whatever color you're doing and color your insides there. Um, then you'll be able to uh, attach your ring or whatever, okay? Our next step we're ready for, I'm ready to grommet. Uh, for these, I like to use a good size grommet, you guys. I have a little uh, grommet gun here, and I get my grommets. These are the size that goes in tennis shoes that I just sent off and got, and this is the size of those. And all I'm going to do is simply pop one of my grommets in my hole here, and then I'm going to use the male end to the, uh, the unpretty side of my grommet, and then just simply smash these together. And then I have my grommet laid here. And I'm not going to make you all watch this. I got this one here a little bit wonky just now. So I need to redo that. Those of you that don't have a grommet machine, again, never fear. Um, all you need to do is uh, use your wallering tool or your hand punch. 
punch you a hole uh, through your decorative paper. Use a pretty color or, you know, some kind of nice paper. And then trim a circle around it. About a good uh, quarter of an inch I like to go. Just around it. And just something to frame the hole that you just made. Okay? Just something that will fit right over that hole. You could do front and back. And that will finish that out. And give that a little finished look. Now, guys, again, I'm not going to make y'all watch me grommet these, so I'm going to get off here for a minute and go ahead and attach my grommets. Those of you who are doing the grommet tool, again, a lot of you know how to use those. If this is your first time, again, uh, from the front, apply your grommet uh, for, so that your pretty side is showing up. Put the male in through the unpretty side through the back. Uh, level it uh, to where it's dead bang center and then squeeze tight and it will um, put your grommet in. So I'll be right back y'all as soon as I get all of those put in. Alrighty guys I got mine all done and I uh, I really went and uh, did mine in. I grungied mine all up and smashed them and crashed them. Uh, I put my uh, thing off kilter uh, and smashed them so that mine would be all beat up and tore up because mine's going to be a Halloween out mini album like I said so I really grungy munched it up um, these had uh, front and the back to them I just used the front you know went in different grommets different things anyways now that those are all done uh, again double check make sure that you haven't uh, hopefully you have not sealed the wrong end you know, if you have some touch-ups that you want to do here and there, if you've got some dents and dings on any of your uh, cardboard rolls, go ahead and uh, hit those if you like. I'm going to leave. I've got a couple of dents and dings, but again, this is going to be a Halloween album, so I'm leaving mine as is. Okay, so now it's time for us to select our front and back covers. So that's what I want you to do now is select what uh, paper you want to use as your front and back cover now like i said i'm going to use a little bit of corrugated cardboard on mine so uh, i'm just going to rip some pieces of that for the front and the back um, that i'm going to use uh, and just uh, check those out you know and uh, like a mixed media this and kind of look at it and just see what pieces I like here and there. So I'm just going to rip up a pile of those and I'll use that throughout the book as well. Um, the rest of you, like I said, go ahead and pick uh, what what you want for your front and your back. I would recommend sticking with uh, on the outside of your front and the back uh, the same. I would definitely recommend using the same paper so that, again, it looks more professional and stuff. Um, I am going to choose, I think my opening page is going to be this pretty forever. And then I'm going to trim that down to match the other side. So, um, what, uh, you need to do with that, guys, is, uh, measure. Now, like I said, these toilet paper rolls are different sizes, depending on what brand you use and stuff. So, just come in here and measure uh, how big you are now minus three. I want to come back a quarter of an inch off of that measurement So that my paper I still see a little bit of border trim of this black around it now That's totally up to you guys if you want to cover the entire thing and you just wanted to do this for a little bit of extra You know something go right ahead uh, the choice is up to you me I'm going to cut mine at two and three quarters and then you want to measure from your um, uh, punch that you did. Don't measure from the very end now because you have to come down from that. So mine from it is three and a half, which I'll cut mine three and a quarter by two and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And then again, I'll be right back. Okay, I have mine cut here. And um, what I like to do, guys, to finish these out is I like to hit my edges with a little Distress Ink. Or if you don't have any Distress Ink, you can use a Black Magic Marker or a Sharpie. And just simply go across your edges right here. Just the edges. Be careful that you don't run this over the front of your design. But just a little bit there. 
to where that finishes that out. You don't see that white cut edge right there. I really hate that. That gives it more of a finished look. Um, and it blends into the paper. So I'm just going to hit mine with this vintage photo. Now, guys, if you really want to distress this, you can come in in a circular motion on the front edges a little bit. Me, I'm not. I'm just going to simply do my edges. And it really gives that a finished look, like I said. I really, I like that better than uh, that just raw white cut edge. It tends to, to me, it just doesn't look as uh, finished and professional. So, um, then we're going to go ahead and, whoops, we're going to go ahead and glue them down real quick. Our outside, um, our front and back inside. Or outside, I mean. So, um, whatever glue you're using, you guys, just go ahead. Try not to get it to where it's seeping out. Hopefully, you don't have a glue that's going to take a lot of that. And come in about an eighth of an inch or so, you guys, um, all the way around. Just so that you can see some of that um, edge there. And try to get that on as straight as possible. You know, it's not going to kill you if it's off a little bit. As I've said before, it's homemade. For Christ's sakes, it's not going to be perfect. But that's how mine looks. And if you need to uh, use your brayer or your uh, bone folder or your ruler, again, just try to get all the air bubbles out of that. If anything's seeping out of the edge, uh, you can get you a damp, just barely damp, uh, dish uh, rag towel uh, to hit the edges of any glue seepage that comes around. Hit that, try to hit that immediately. And you shouldn't get that sheen around it, you know, where... The glue has seeped out, you know. So, um, again, we're going to go uh, front and back on this. I should have turned that grommet around on the end there, but that's okay. It doesn't matter because we're going to put a ring in it anyways. And let's see. Here's how our front looks. I'm going to continue that look. If you have a design, you know, try to cut these to where the design carries on. But I like to use the same piece of paper you know if there's a design on it or the color or whatever so that your front your back looks the same see and it uh see here's my front and then here's my back see what i mean see so that it's uniform okay guys now then what we're going to do is what i want you to do is go ahead i'm going to turn you guys into designers right now um your inside pages Figure out what your background pages is going to be for each sheet. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to come in and measure so that you make sure that you get your cuts right. I want this to look good for y'all. And measure, because like I said again, all the toilet paper rolls aren't the same. Your pages on the inside should be a little bit smaller than your front and back cover. So make sure that you come in here, and like I said, whatever the measurement is, I like to back it up a quarter of an inch, all the, on all uh, all four, you know, on your length as well as your width. Back it up a quarter of an inch from what it really is. Don't forget to measure from your grommet there for your length, okay? And then what I like to do is I like to go through my papers, and again, you want to keep your themes the same. How your pages are turning, like these two here, I want these two pages to play off of each other. So when you open this up, this background goes with that background. Then as you turn the page, these two backgrounds match each other. These two backgrounds match each other. You can use a different color page for each page if you prefer. If I did that, I would stay in the same paper pad. But this is what I like to do. Like this page right here, these, these little uh, six by sixes and stuff are perfect for these. Um, I would just pick one page and then keep, you know, each page off of the same page cut twice to coexist with each other, okay? So that's what we're going to do now is cut. We're going to need two, four, six, 
eight, ten pages, okay? So five sets cut to fit with a quarter of an inch less. And like I said again, this is totally up to you guys, whatever theme you're going with. I would go with a quarter of an inch less on your width as well as your length on the cut so that you get a little bit of your pretty paint edge trim around there, okay? And don't forget to edge your paper after you cut it. Go ahead and adhere those down, okay? I want you to select those and just go ahead on and adhere all of that down. And then we'll return and I'll show you what I have, okay? See you in a minute. Okay, guys, I've come back for just a second uh, just to uh, remind you again if you're using Distress Inks or um, doing the um, edging with the Black Magic Marker, don't forget. If you're going with a corner theme, that's what I wanted to pop in real quick. Um, go ahead and uh, cut your corner opposite like if you wanted this like I wanted this pretty little piece right here to show I put the pretty little piece that I want it to show up against um, the cut itself so that I don't cut that design you get what I mean like I wanted this to show right here from this corner and this was um, uh, three and a quarter so I laid the edge of the design I wanted to keep up against the three and a quarter mark on my cutter and cut the other end so that way whenever I cut it I would get that design okay you do the same thing if you're using a corner like if there's a little uh, bracket on the corner there if you're using frames or whatever just use the same concept use your lay your corner piece upside down where your uh, cut line is to end at and then let the cutter cut the other end that way your pretty decorated end will be ready to put on okay I hope that makes sense uh, I'll show you more as I get mine done here but I just thought that I would pop that in real quick so that you guys got that uh, use it the flip your paper upside down and put the decorative edge at the end of your cut. Like I said, like mine was three and a quarter, I laid the pretty piece that I wanted to show up against the three and a quarter mark and then cut the other end, okay? Just a quick little uh, pop in. And again, I'm not gonna make y'all watch me glue all the paper. So I just wanted to let you in on that real fast, okay? Bye-bye.